Hi there. Welcome to Books and Things with Tom. I'm Tom. And today we have a special guest. I always have special guests every week. But, special. But today's uh, guest is uh, Eileen Kaplan. And it's kind of fitting in with my other uh, medical series uh, shows in that uh, uh, we're going to talk about breast cancer and her book, which is Laughter is a Breast Medicine. And welcome, Eileen. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. Thank you. So I love the book, and we were going through the book, and I think, I think first of all, we should clear the fact up that cancer isn't funny. Cancer is not funny. But the, why don't you explain why you're laughing okay. about this? Uh, cancer is not a funny thing. Yeah. We all know that. It's, it's a very ugly disease, and, and it takes uh, so many people away from us. But uh, it was my choice after I stopped crying was to laugh at all the absurdities that I was going through on my journey. A lot of crazy things. You can either, you have a choice. You can laugh or you can cry. And after I finished crying, and I did cry in between, um, I laughed at the crazy things because I have a, a really wild and crazy sense of humor. And um, I, used it, I used it as my crutches. I really did. I used it as my crutches. Well, people sometimes don't understand why people are laughing about things like that. That's and, true. And we were talking about like That's my true. son, my, my my son that had passed away. Right. And and I laugh at him all the time. We laugh together. I believe. Yeah. I don't know if he is there, but I, but I believe we laugh together. And everything that happens, I blame him because I have nobody else to blame. Of course. And I'm sure he probably calls me a jerk or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but but you have to laugh because otherwise the tears. The tears hurt. They do, and and I said it. It's not that I didn't cry, but um, and and things happened, you know, along the journey that I cried because I didn't feel good. Yeah. Um, and so I just I I laughed at I just making fun of the things that happened. I would take when we went for looking for my wig, you know, my wow. girlfriends were with me. We took pictures. We laughed our buns off. Uh, and we told the lady at the at the wig shop, we're not laughing at you. We're not laughing at the wigs. We're just having a grand old time, and that's and that's the way I handled yeah. it. That's the way I handled it. Yeah, and and a lot of that laughing is uh, nervous laughter because you got to pick out a wig. I want my own hair back. I'm sure. You know, I'm telling you, it just it didn't bother me. Hair grows. And, and that's how I handled that. Do yeah. you know, I couldn't stand the pieces falling out. And so I just said to my husband, Arnie, when we came home from Boston one day, where my breast cancer surgeon is, um, I said, let's just get rid of it. So we went in the backyard with a scissor, a razor, a mirror, and my daughter, Dana. Mm -hmm. And he cut my hair. And then we shaved my head. And that was the end of the falling out hair. Wow. It was just, it just didn't bother me at yeah. all. I just... I didn't care. I just, all I wanted to do, the goal was to get through it and get better. Yeah. You know, hair grows. And uh, sure, it was cold in the winter, so I wore hats all the time. I didn't wear turbans. I didn't wear scarves. I was just, I was just a hat person and earrings, and, and that's the way I was. Yeah. Well, that's, I, I'm sure that goes through your head, because I know I'm going, getting a little lightheaded up there. And into, yeah, lightheaded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, but. My age has something to do with it. Yeah. Now, let me ask you, how did you know that you had breast cancer? How did I know? Um, well, I check my breasts once a month. And that really actually is a, is a really funny story, which, which happens to be in the book, is that uh, everybody should have a breast buddy, be it husband and wife, paramours, spouses, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, I don't know about the backseat of the car. Yeah. But anyway, okay. it's really important to, to check your breasts once a month. And when you check your breasts once a month, you, the owner of the breasts, knows her body. You know, so if you have cystic breasts or, you know, things like that going on, you know where those lumps are. And then all of a sudden, something else appears that you didn't know about. So um, I always was uh, in the shower, soaping up my breasts, checking them once a month. And um, one day, my husband came home from fishing with one of his, his best buddy, Ken. And Ken had to take a shower and go off to a, to a quick appointment. 
So um, he came out of the bathroom and hanging on his uh, breast, breast pocket was my um, diagram of how you check your breasts in the shower thing. So he said, Eileen, how, did you check your breasts today? <laughs> and I said, well, not today, Kenny, but I have checked them once a month. He said, so from that point on, he called me the first of every month and reminded me to check my breasts. <laughs> I mean, we're just crazy, funny, wild people. Sure. Have been friends for a very long. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have been friends for ages. And, and all our friends are the same way. Yeah. So we're able to handle this, this sure. stuff. That's good. And... Uh, it was instrumental in reminding me, and I and having checked my breasts, I did find on the right side, soaping up on the right side one day, um, I found a lump that I never knew was there. And I knew immediately it wasn't a cyst. It just was not a cyst. Yeah. So um, the crazy thing is, is that I called Boston. That's where I happened to be with a gynecologist at the time because a bunch of girls went up there, and we all had gynecologists there. And they said to me, oh, you know, don't worry. Call your primary care physician and let him check first before you run up to Boston. So I did. I called my primary care physician's office, and the receptionist said to me, oh, it's all right. Don't worry. She said, oh, you have an appointment next week for your regular checkup. Um, wait until next week, and we'll check it. I said, thank you, goodbye. And the next morning I was in Boston. Wow. And mammogram, ultrasound, it was there. Right. It was there. So then she referred me to um, Brigham and Women's Hospital. Uh, my breast cancer surgeon is um, Dr. Mary Golshan, actually is uh, director of breast surgical wow. services at Dana-Farber and wow. Brigham and Women's Hospital. And... Um, Recently, I was, 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 was endowed a chair by a princess from Saudi Arabia for oh. surgical oncology. Mm. So he's, uh, quite a, he's quite a guy. I was very, very lucky. Yes. Very, very lucky. And I had a lumpectomy. You know, take it out, get me on, let me go on with my life. You know, chemo, radiation, the whole thing. During my radiation, which was like five months later, I was checking my breasts. I mean, what else do you do, right? Yeah. And, um, and I found another tumor on the left side, which is my good breast, quote unquote. And so this one was really very unusual. It was very tiny, up very high in between two ribs, right next to my sternum. Very, very tiny, tiny. Wow. They could only find it actually after I went through mammogram and ultrasound and, uh, and finally found it on an MRI. They, they pinpointed it on, on an MRI. And then I had um, um, you know, a biopsy done and there we were. Primary cancer number two. So um, a decision had to be made whether I was going to conserve my breasts or remove them. And um, all, of the, all of the characteristics of my tumors led me to my decision. And of course, emotional and oh, yeah. brain. Yeah. And it was a 95% survival rate if I had conservation or if I had a bilateral mastectomy. Um, but I really did not want to have conservation because I couldn't take any more, any, any, because I had negative tumors. I couldn't take any of the anti-cancer drugs. So it would have meant more chemo, more radiation, more lumpectomy, more, more of everything. And, and I decided that for me and my emotions and in my my psyche, that the best thing for me was to leave my breasts in Boston, mm. and I did that. I did that, and I'm never sorry to this day, ever. That's good. Yep. That's good because you do read about uh, Angelina Jolie. Yeah. And, yep. and and I give her credit. You know, people say she's doing it for publicity. No, but I don't think so. I don't think so either because she's too a sharp woman to do that. Yeah. And she is doing it just like you to get people to understand. It's there. It's possible. Yeah, she had, yeah, she had BRCA1 too. She had BRCA1. Yeah. You know, it's the genetics that she had done. Okay. And BRCA1, BRCA2. And her BRCA1 uh, genetics showed that she had an 85% chance of developing cancer. Yeah. And so what would you do? Yeah. And you it's know not that? something you can wait for. And say, no. well, maybe it'll go oh, away. I'll wait till or... next year. You know, yeah. you can't yeah. do that. Yeah. And so with the removal of her breasts, and she had... From what I can have read, a a very um, 
I'm not sure exactly what kind of reconstruction she had. Yeah. My guess is she had something that was um, that they took from the stomach and made. But I don't really know. Yeah. But all I know is is that she's now five percent, and from eighty-seven percent. Wow. To five percent is is a big is, uh, is yeah. a big percentage. Now, had you had breast cancer in the family or? Um, Way, way down the road, um, one of my father's sisters wow. had breast cancer and died 40 years ago wow. from breast cancer. And there were none on my mother's side. So you really can't say, oh, it's from yeah. your mother's side, but it could be from your father's side as well. It doesn't, it doesn't choose. Hmm. It doesn't choose. So you recommend checking every day? Every or, month. Or every month. month. Every month, absolutely. And and what we're trying to to really get is the younger women. Uh, a lot of the younger women are very, very afraid of you know touching themselves and you know yeah. rolling with the punches there. So I always tell them you know go to your favorite soap store, buy your favorite fragrance of soap, and soap yourself up with a jasmine or lavender or whatever you want to do, yeah. and um, and make it a monthly thing. And this way you'll be healthier for it because. You're, you may not be able to prevent the cancer, but you certainly can catch it very early on. Yeah, that's great. So you decided to write a book. Now, what made you decide to write the well, book? Well, you know, I had a fabulous team at Brigham and Women's, yeah. and uh, I guess through my sense of humor and how I was handling everything, one day my breast cancer surgeon said to me, I mean, you know, you really should write a book and write it down. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't write right away, but I kept a journal of all the crazy and funny things that, that I encountered. Yeah. And um, one day I was in the shower. I mean, that must be my, my best place to, to think. <laughs> um, and the, the name of the book fell into my brain. And then I needed the first line. And once I got the first line of, of the book, I was able to have a foundation for what the rest of the book was going to be okay. like. Yeah. And uh, the first the first sentence of the book is, once upon a time, there were two itty bitty breast buds. <laughs> so at the end of the book, there are no more breasts. Yeah. So it's from the beginning to the to the end. Wow. And uh, and that's the way I've handled it the entire time. Well, I think we all have to laugh, and laughter is what keeps everybody going. Yeah. And it's no good to sit around and mope and, no, you can't. and be depressed. And, but you have to somehow yeah. get back Well, to Norman Cousins says laughter is inner jogging. So, you know, you don't have to put sneakers on. No. That's you know, right. just but have one good laugh a day. And that and that does uh, raises your endorphins and gives you a lot of extra energy. And my husband and I are um, both have really um, unusual sense of humors senses of humor, as I should say, senses of humor, and uh, we feed off each other a lot. Yeah. And we really, we really uh, made my breast cancer surgeon and, and my team blush, laugh, and smile. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> well, I that's, think that's where the idea came from was from, from, was from my breast cancer surgeon. They say if you can't laugh at yourself, don't laugh at anybody else. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. That's really true. And you have to do that because it's you got to learn how to laugh at yourself. And you just don't have to be insulting. <laughs> no, you can insult yourself, too. You, oh, yeah. you look in the mirror and say, oh, my God. You know, that's I think, was one of the, the biggest things. I mean, it really didn't bother me at all that I, that I, had, uh, I had foundation for reconstruction. Mm -hmm. And um, I was having a lot of pain from the expanders that were put in my body. Mm -hmm. And uh, four months after, after that, I uh, just told my breast cancer surgeon and my plastic surgeon, I've just had enough of pain. I've had enough. And I had the expanders removed. And I said, so I'll be flat, sleek, ditches, wrinkled. I really don't care. As long as I am free of cancer and go on with my life. Yeah. And, and that's what I did. Oh, I, I admire you for that because it's... It's not an easy... You no, know, it's, it's a very. It's a very personal... Yeah. Bre breast cancer is a very personal thing oh, yeah. for me very personal thing but i have been able to talk about it yeah and the, and the nice thing is today it's on tv it's out there that's right. people know about it they don't have to whisper behind me that's right and uh i know when 
when I was a kid, nobody ever talked. I about mean, that. like was the big C. Oh, you know, God. you had you had to whisper and make sure that you wasn't. If you just said the word cancer, you had to be yeah. whisper. My mother had a lump removed, and I don't think I knew about it for ten years. Yeah, yeah. It's like <coughs> cancer came out something. of the closet. Yeah, yeah. She wasn't going to tell me about it. Right, right. Ten year old kid, I got told. That's right. And uh, so today, it is it is good. It's out there and. It's very good. It really acknowledging is. Acknowledging it and yeah. saying, hey, this is what you got to do. You know, you have so many choices, you yeah. know, you have so many choices. But I think the most important thing is to remember is that you cannot prevent it, but you can exercise and you can eat healthy mm -hmm. and you can stay healthy and you can laugh and enjoy your life. But check your breasts every month and it may help you live a lot longer because if it's if you catch it early, it's it's really a very good a very good thing for you. And it goes for men too. You were men too. About. Yes, twenty two hundred men last year, or twenty four hundred men last year were diagnosed with breast wow. cancer. And it's not the same as uh, women's breast cancer because it's not fueled by estrogen. Oh, okay. So um, do check your breasts mm. and soap them up. And I always tell my crowd when I'm speaking is, um, you know. You check her breasts, let him check your breasts, you know, have a little roll in the hay, <laughs> have some fun. But make sure the breasts get checked first. Next to the breasts, <laughs> and, then, and I said, and, and then, and, and then just, just enjoy life. Yeah. But uh, you, you can take care of each other. Yes. And it's really important. Yeah. That's great. So talk about the book. Talk about the book. Yeah, show, if you would show me some pictures. Okay. Uh, I think it's an amazing book. It's an amazing little book. Actually, uh, what has happened, the book has become my sidekick okay. because I really have um, gone ahead of it into uh, motivational speaking and using mm -hmm. the humor that I have and the humor that I've used in the book to um, help people lift. You know, um, it's, a, it's a very tough subject. Mm -hmm. And to make people laugh from something that may have happened to you or something funny that you can tell them, I think is really, really very important. Yes, very, very important. Is. So this picture on the front of my book is when I threw my bras out. We came home from Boston. I knew I had breast cancer. I had, uh, I, I knew I was going to wear a bra again. That was just not me. You know, everybody has their own thing. Yeah. And so I put them all in a black garbage bag and threw them in, you notice, notice it's a galvanized garbage can, oh, yeah. so you know how old I am, because <laughs> it's not a plastic garbage can. And uh, so I had, I had a wonderful illustrator, Craig Quen, uh, Sanquidulce, who, um, who is an attorney in the Norwich court system. I, huh. I brought him my manuscript, and he did all of the uh, illustrations inside, and he did uh -huh. this wonderful caricature on the back <laughs> of Eileen walking out of the... Uh, out of the book healthy mm -hmm. with my two Sharpe, which are just um, really the, the wrinkles that I'm left with. Yeah, They're not really dogs. <laughs> Someone said to me, where are your dogs? I said, mm, here. <laughs> They're with me 24 seven. I don't have to worry about them. They, I don't have to feed them. I don't have to water them. I don't have to walk them. But also um, a very special person in my life is my husband, okay. Arnie, uh -huh. um, who is an avid fisherman and on um, this particular day caught a bra mm -hmm. and uh, was my nurse. Oh, yeah. He was, you know, my family, you, you need that supportive, yes, you know. that supportive group around you. Mm -hmm. And he was my nurse. I, he, I would be like Linus. I'd walk around the house with my blanket and, mm -hmm. and my pillow and he would never know where I'd be flopping, you know, to rest. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a tough recovery um, for me. I was in my early sixties, which you know is still young, oh, but sure. it was it was it was a tough recovery, yeah. and so he cooked, he cleaned, we went grocery shopping, he pushed the basket because I have a lot of uh, chest wall muscle issues uh, uh, from the surgery, yeah. and um, I really forgot to cook. I forgot how to cook actually. You know they say that chemo brain. What does it do to you? Well, I forgot how to cook, oh, wow. and. Um, and Arnie's still cooking. <laughs> so, that's convenient. Isn't it great? Oh, what? You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is great, Arnie, even if I hate it. That's okay, <laughs> I tell you. 
better than cooking it myself. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So he and, and and I bought him a very lightweight vacuum oh. for a, a gift because uh -huh. I really can't vacuum good anymore. It just I've got, there's too much going on in the chest wall. Yeah, and um, I have lymphedema left over from my breast cancer surgeon uh, for my surgery which is a swelling of the parts of the body. You know, you've seen women with their long sleeves on. Yeah. They get it in their arms. Mine happens to be right right here where I pledge allegiance to the flag. Uh -huh. and, um, and I go every two weeks, I go to um, physical therapy, who is a, she's a master in the VODER method, V-O-D-D-E-R. She is, it's integrative manual therapy and they just, they just know your lymphatic system. They can feel it, and they help it drain, and they teach you how to drain it. Wow. So now, how long really, ago was this? My surgery was in 05, mm -hmm. in December of 05. Yeah. And the book didn't come out until four years later. Yeah. So, um, But that's, that's what I've been doing since then. I've been, mm. I've been hoofing around with a book all over New England. Um, yeah, and you've been Calgary, to Calgary, you should see my cowboy hat. Oh really? Oh yeah, I spoke in Calgary at the uh, oh. at the big uh, march for the cure at the Bank Mall in Calgary, oh, okay. and I I walked off the uh, off the plane and they plunked one of those beautiful cowboy hats on me oh, and cool. yeah, oh. it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So you're getting a lot of mileage out of this. I am. I'm having I'm having a great time. That's I really am. Awesome. I just love making people laugh and yeah. uh, and also educating at the same time with humor, reminding. Yeah. Um, and it's just become part of me, a part of me. I give, uh, donations of books. I mean, to people I don't even know, they wrote to me last year from the De Delaware coalition for breast health. And I sent them a dozen signed books for their auction. And it's just, uh, and what's nice about it is too, is I'm my own boss mm -hmm. and I'm the publisher, the marketer, the agent, I'm the whole thing wrapped together. And that has given me the, the capability of being very easy with what I do and when I do it. And, um, and also take a little break now and then and, and remember that I am retired. Okay. So, but this is a great job from retirement, even though I have it's, no breasts. So I can't really tell you. <coughs> but it's, it's good to be retired so that you oh, have all the time to put into it's this. It's great. It's absolutely great. You know, I send out a lot of... Uh, I have a lot of uh, portfolios that go out in the mail. I have a lot of inquiries. Um, I'm with a couple program services. Um, and um, I put, put out at least 7,000 of these babies. Oh, wow. And I've punched the holes. My, my, actually, my grandson, my, before he went back to school, I said, oh, Michael, I said, you really have to help Grandma. And he punched, uh, you know, like, 5,000 holes for me, <laughs> but I cut all the ribbon and I crochet all the, the ribbon through. Oh, yeah. And so that's sort of like my little, um, my little thing. That's cute. Now, where, where can people see you coming up? Anything? Let's see. Um, I just spoke actually, as I told you at the race in the park oh, in, yes. in New Britain, which was really, I mean, thousands of runners from teenies to to older people oh, wow. and uh what is the it is the connecticut breast Ham, breast cancer initiative uh -huh. which um they uh initially when they started um their their monies were going to another breast cancer organization uh -huh. and they found that not enough was going to research so they decided to keep all the money in connecticut and they went llc so they have money for research, goes to doctors at UConn for research, it goes to kids' uh, scholarships, you know, if they're, depending on the study, the medical studies they're going into. And it also is used for uh, helping women who don't have money to help supply them with help in the house if they need it or help for an exam or pay for a mammogram. So that's where I spoke two weeks ago. And I was uh, really, uh, it was really exciting. I was with uh, Nancy Wyman, who is our lieutenant That's governor. I just missed uh, Rebecca Lobo. We were we oh. just past each other in the rain. You may have not have seen it. Cause... Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and Joan London was there greeting the runners as they came off, off the race. And Joan was, uh, is a very lovely person. She has a camp on um, Long Lake in Maine called uh, at the end of the summer called 
Camp Reveille for women. It's like a three and a half day retreat for women. Yeah. A blast and a half. Wow. A blast and a half. And she has invited me to speak at her camp this coming oh, summer. Good. Yeah. Wow. Very exciting. Let's so I'm... You want to spend a week? Uh, no, <laughs> just the three and a half days. Just the three and a half days. And um, I'll do a couple breakout sessions for her. Yeah. And I have a bunch of things coming up that are in mid-contract. So I really, until they're together, I just, yeah. um, I don't really talk about them. You well, know? I think that's great. Uh, especially a lot of radio. A just... lot of radio. A lot. Yeah. I've done tons of radio. And, and a lot of television as well. I did uh, WTNH. Um, just a few months yeah. ago, and a, a cute story was my sister was at a um, garden show, and she was sitting there eating her lunch at a little tiny table, and these people came over, and they said, can we sit with you, because there were no other chairs. She said, sure, but she had my bag there that said, laughter is the breast medicine, and the woman said, I know that woman. <laughs> I know her. I have heard her. She's terrific, and so my sister said, She's my sister. No way. <laughs> oh, Shad, yes way, yes way. But uh, we're having a lot of fun. We're having uh, a lot of fun. That's neat. Uh, as you as you know, I discussed it before. Uh, I think I think it's two weeks. I'm having Terry. Uh, yes, Marcy. Marcy Marcy right. and I. Right. And she's a representative for the uh, Terry Broder. 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 Yeah. And uh, she's very interesting, and she's going to be talking about the breast cancer. Mm -hmm. what, what they do and mm -hmm. how they raise their money. Mm -hmm. Was there a walk coming up yeah. in October? Yeah, it? yeah. I, I, I don't remember September, if it's June or October. October. Yeah. I don't remember which which month it is, yeah. but it's June or October. But they, uh, and and I didn't realize they they were working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's a great story. You gotta listen to this story because it's a great story. They were working for somebody else. They had to have X number of dollars. They had to do this and had right. to do that. Right. And they said, "We gotta do all this work. Why don't we do our own?" Exactly. And they picked Terry. And she didn't even want it, <laughs> but they, it's really grown. Yes. I remember when it first started because yeah. I was in the Lions Club and, and people were coming in looking for money. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's, it has grown fantastically. Yes, it has. It is. It's, it's really big. Yeah, it's really big. So much is being done today. Well, you know, really, it's, you know, uh, Rhode Island is the number one for breast cancer in the country. And Connecticut is number two. Yeah. So everything we do, everything we put into research, and of course the new uh, cancer center at, at L&M with Dana Farber right. is certainly going to yeah. be a nice plus for the area. I'm, I'm good friends with uh, um, Dr. Norton, who was the, is the satellite person at uh, Brigham and put the, put the deal together. Oh, wow. Yeah, huh. yeah. Well, it's really interesting how many people you meet in your life, huh? It is. It is. Right, tap this one, tap that yeah. one, tap this one. And then you get to use them and, and get Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Uh, just 25 minutes go so fast. Uh, tomorrow is the start of a long Memorial Day weekend. And it's a time to reflect on our lost military men and women who have devoted their lives to uh, lives and limbs to the United States of America and its citizens. Cemeteries all over the world are, have got our soldiers in it. And uh, we have to remember that uh, Memorial Day parties, parades, and family reunions are happening all over. And uh, please use caution this weekend. Uh, we want everyone back next year and the year after to celebrate Memorial Day. It's also known as Decoration Day, or it used to be known as Decoration right, Day. Right, right. And uh, back in the day, we decorated our bicycles and put some streamers on we them. We did. I was in a bunch of parades. Through the wheels oh, yes. And take them in parades. Yes, absolutely. And we were big shots because we had a bike all dressed oh, up. Oh yeah, we had a bike, and we used to put the, uh, the the piece of cardboard on the with the with the with the, the clothespin. Uh, yeah, yeah. We make the noise and buzz buzz down the road. And we get prizes if we won, which a lot of times we're really we dating each other, aren't we? Oh my god! Fun. But it, it was, was fun. fun. It was. And I, and I wish we could do that again because I think it was stuff that. Arnie said, Eileen, okay. I'm not going to let you get on a bike. Yeah, I said, yeah. I guess I said okay. I, I don't get on bikes anymore. My That's legs sick. are too weak. <laughs> uh, God bless the USA and all of its military forces who protect her. And God bless the families of those who can't be here to join in on the festivities. To everyone, Godspeed and have a wonderful weekend. And by the way, Miss Guanica is actually going to be open. Yes. yes. That is fantastic. That's a miracle. In itself. That's a miracle. It's just amazing to do that. Right. Uh, as I said, next week we got uh, Bernard Merstein 
who is an author of several books, and a very special lady the week after, Gemma Moran, who ran the uh, Gemma Moran Food Bank in New London, mm -hmm. uh, United Way right. Labor Bank. Right, right. That is fantastic. She is such a remarkable woman. She is. And uh, my thanks to Comcast and the host and uh, for hosting the show and our sponsors and for everybody watching. Be sure to write me at my email address, santostom at uh, comcast.net. And don't forget, you should be reading Curl Up With a Good Book, and I'll see you next week. And stop at your bookstore and pick up a copy of Laughter is the Best Medicine. Breast. Breast. Breast, breast medicine. Breast, yeah. Best breast medicine. The best, the best <laughs> book of breast medicines I can tell you. <laughs>